self off mute. There we are. All right. How's that? That was 2020 and 2021 in wrapped up in one, one, one segment right there. You're on mute. Someone whispered off camera. Perfect way to start an episode. Everyone's loving that one, I'm sure. So welcome to our second ever episode of New Breakpoint. As you can see, we're learning as we're going. What better way to start the, the show than being on mute? All right. Um, so if you haven't joined us before, you might be wondering what New Breakpoint is apart from me being on mute. Uh, well, it's a show that's for developers in Australia, by developers in Australia, uh, produced by Microsoft. Um, today, we've got some great Microsoft Cloud Solution architects joining us uh, to talk about an amazing topic, but there'll be a range of different topics. So next week will be a community show um, and we're gonna have a special broadcast uh, in two weeks actually as part of the Microsoft Ignite event. Details are at the end of the show, so make sure you stick around for that. Uh, when we do stream, we'll be streaming right here live every Thursday at 11 a.m. Even if I'm on mute, I'm gonna be streaming. You can sure bet that's gonna happen. All right. So how can you join in? We're live streaming. That means you can ask questions, either tweet us at Microsoft AU Dev, uh, or you can join uh, on our YouTube channel where we're broadcasting right now. You can use the chat window on the left-hand side of your screen um, if you wanna have real-time chat while we're live streaming. If you're watching the show uh, later after we've finished, feel free to add comments uh, below the video. I uh, would love to hear from you uh, and get feedback on things you'd like to see or how we're doing on the show, uh, or even to throw some shade about how I started on mute. Um, I do want to give a quick shout out uh, to Bilal Bobat, uh, who was actually the first ever person to comment, comment on any of our content. So uh, thanks for, for that, Bilal. And um, I'll work towards getting someone on to talk about um, durable functions using Python to do fan in, fan out. All right. That's it for the intro for today's show. We've got some great speakers joining us today. We have Angela Dinch and Stuart, who are members of our Cloud Solution Architecture team uh, in Canberra, and they work with our customers to help them achieve more with their Azure investments. I'm gonna bring Angela on, uh, who's gonna introduce herself uh, and Dinch and Stuart, and then she's gonna take us uh, on uh, data scientists' view of uh, moving into the Azure serverless space. So let me bring Angela on here two seconds. Hey, Angela, you're on mute. There we are, you're <laughs> Thanks, off mute. Simon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for having me, this is great. It's all right. Um, all right, so I'm gonna hop off the stream. Um, when you're ready to, to share some stuff, just bring it up and I will uh, add it on. But over to you, Angela, to introduce yourself and Dinch and Stu. Brilliant, thanks Simon. So hi everyone, and today we're going to take you through a scenario that we have adapted from a number of customer experiences that we've had in terms of operationalizing data science work. So in this scenario, we're going to be looking at uh, detecting trucks from traffic camera Im images, and we'll be using the Python, Azure Python SDK to interact with the Azure AI services, and we'll also be using Azure Python functions to automate the process flow. So in this scenario, I will be performing the role of a data scientist, and my colleague Dinch will be performing the role of the data engineer, who's going to help me automate my data science. And then we will have Stu, who will be performing the role of the cloud operations team, who's going to help make sure that what we do is secure and enterprise ready. So that's all the introductions. So what I'd like to do now is whiteboard with you uh, to show you the process and the scenario that we are going to work through um, today. So I've just got my whiteboard up here. And so from this process flow that we're working with, um, there will be a camera, a traffic camera, I hope my drawing's okay, taking the photos of traffic and popping those images into some kind of storage. We then want to pick up those images and do an AI run an AI model uh, to detect whether or not there are trucks in that image and whereabouts in those images are those trucks. We want to then get those outputs and put them in another kind of storage. And these outputs can be used for different kinds of analytics depending on what scenario is required. 
So myself as the data scientist, I'm quite interested in the in the AI side of things. So I really want to make sure that the model is working and performing as required. Whereas my colleague Dinch as the data engineer is really going to help me to automate this whole process of picking up the images, running the prediction with the AI model and generating those outputs to be used by others. So this is the, the flow that we're going to be working through today. So to jump into the data science side of things, I'm going to show you the notebook that I have written to um, run the AI model. So you can see here that I am using uh, Jupyter Notebooks, and this is a quite a common tool in the data science community. It's great because it allows you to chunk the code into different cells, and you can run those cells independently. So this is really handy for debugging as well as for building out uh, the workflow of your code. It also incorporates Markdown, uh, so you can add detailed comments and really communicate to others what you are doing with your code. So you can see here that I am using Python to do my work and I'm importing the libraries that I need. Um, and I'm also setting the variables and the keys to interact with the Azure AI services. So in this case, I used Azure Custom Vision to, um, to be able to train the AI model to detect the trucks. And now I'm calling that model that I have trained in order to do the predictions on the new images that I've called, that I've uh, prepared. So you can also see that I have hard coded my resource keys here. And I know that that's not best practice. So when we talk to Stu from our cloud team, he's definitely going to let me know what I need to do to make sure that this is secure. And then moving down, I am calling the, um, I'm telling where the image is located, um, just in a local folder. I am calling the, um, the AI model to make the prediction on whether or not there are trucks. And if there are trucks, please put a box around them and so we can see where in the image those trucks are and save the output file as well. So this indicates that there are two trucks that have been found and I'm going to show you what that looks like on the output image. And you can see here, absolutely, the AI model found two trucks. Now, I do see that it has missed a couple, but in this scenario, let's assume that I am happy with how this model is performing. Let's say I've done all my performance testing and it's good enough to be in production. At that point, I'd like to hand over to my colleague Dinch, who's going to talk about how he'll operationalize, sorry, how he will automate this whole process flow with Azure Functions. So thanks, over to you, Dinch. Thank you, Angela. Uh, so as the uh, as a data engineer in this scenario, um, we've chosen to use Azure Functions to automate this process. Uh, so I will quickly show you how to provision that on your local dev machine. Uh, so I will just bring up my VS Code. And so at this point, I've just opened a, a blank folder where I'd like to keep my solution files. Um, once I've installed it, the, the core dependencies, so Azure Function Core Tools, uh, as, well as, uh, as well as the VS Code extension for Azure Functions, uh, I can come down to the... Uh, the terminal here and just type in uh, func init dash dash python and hit go. And this here will actually start provisioning um, a solution, uh, an Azure function project for me. At that point, I can come down into um, the extension. It will pick it up and you can click on this and start following uh, the, the, the prompts to initializing that, uh, that, that project. So what I will do, so we'll just switch to one I've written based on Angela's code. So what we're doing here is, uh, so the init.py, the main method, the main function within init.py is the entry point to this program. Um, I've taken Angela's code and uh, basically exercised some flexibility here by putting uh, creating a series of helper functions where I'm breaking up certain um, certain tasks. 
So it just sort of uh, helps me keep my code clean. And uh, if I've got any repeat logic, I can just uh, rely on those helper methods. So in this program, um, we are using the, uh, the Azure Blob Storage trigger uh, input binding for the Azure Functions. So what that will do is once we drop a, uh, an image into, the, uh, into Blob Storage, the trigger will actually hand me um, a path to that source image. At that point, I will call my predict helper method. Um, and then based on the results, I will then publish those results to Twitter. Um, so what I will do now is uh, also, before we move on, uh, in order to deploy, uh, in order to deploy the solution, you can basically just click on the function itself uh, and go and click this deploy to function app. Uh, button and follow the prompts and you'll you'll have a, a deployment. So uh, I will come back into here. So just this is just showing the the, the blob trigger uh, for the function as an input trigger. We're not using any output trigger uh, output bindings at this point. Um, you can see the solution files um, through the portal and, and actually see what's uh, what's been deployed. Uh, what I will do is I will actually move an image into that container that we're listening. Um, so I'll do that and let this upload. All right, so we've just dropped an image into the container. Point we should see some um, some output in the in the Azure Function Monitor, and we go into yeah. Hopefully, we will have. Not yet, it might be taking a second to, to come through. Oh, not yet. Please, I'll just show you what that output will look like. It's something along these lines where we're counting the number of trucks that have been uh, detected uh, based on the performance of the model. We're getting some bounding boxes around the objects that have been um, detected with a with a confidence uh, percentage, and we're also just counting uh, just from the metadata that's coming back, so the number of uh, objects detected. So that's uh, that's pretty much it on my end. So I'll pass you on to Stu. Sorry, I think I was on mute as well then. Okay, so um, if you can hear me now. So what we typically see is a team working together like this. So I'm gonna play the operations kind of team and I'll just recap a little bit about what you've just seen. So we've got a traffic camera. We add a vehicle that is detected. Uh, it doesn't know whether it's a truck or a car at this stage. Um, it will write that to Azure Blob Storage in our solution, which will trigger an Azure function. That Azure function calls to the custom vision service to use the model that our data scientist, Angela, uh, worked on. And as she said, you know, she's still training that, but she's fed in a bunch of training images and it's starting to pick up trucks. So we can refine that model as we go here, but now we've built out the whole solution. So what we can see is it sends it to the custom vision service. Custom vision sends back, not a picture, but it sends back some metadata. So it's it's some information about the things it's detected within that image. Um, and that allows us to draw a box around the things on the image and put it into blob storage. And then we show that in Twitter. Um, so what do we do next when we're in operations? As Donovan Brown would say, we rub a little DevOps on it. So DevOps is, um, you know, is, is basically allows us, the DevOps principles and practices allows us to, to really operationalize this. So that's a whole bunch of things. So what would we do in this case? Um, so we might use a tool such as Azure DevOps or, or GitHub um, to allow us to, uh, to create some CI CD pipelines. Um, we might start to use 
Azure App Insights or Azure Monitor. So we get some telemetry on our code and we get a feedback loop so that we can understand whether our code's working or whether the demo gremlins have hit us. Um, so then we'll, uh, we might look to protect the secrets that Angela mentioned in, in her part of this. So when we are managing secrets in our applications, we don't want to hard code them into it. We want an easy way of changing those secrets. So what we typically do is to use an Azure Key Vault. We'll put the secrets in there and we will set the application up so that it goes and collects those secrets when it needs it. That makes it easy to rotate the secrets. Um, and that means just renew them and change them if they get lost or, or or, or we want to just protect them, uh, but also it gives us a really secure spot where we can where we can uh, keep those secrets and audit access to them. Another thing we would do to a solution such as this is lock down the um, lock down the access to the storage accounts. So there's a bunch of different ways you can do that in Azure. Um, so you can do IP restrictions, but one of the ones that I I particularly use in a lot of my projects is to use Azure Private Link to protect the contents of the storage so that we have a, a private IP address for that storage, um, even though it's a fully managed cloud service. So that's typically what we do. So all in all, you know, the solution was already coming together, but these are just a few things that we would do to operationalize it. And hopefully you've learned today a little bit about how you might go out uh, and build something like this yourself um, and, and maybe play around with the cognitive services or the or the, um, uh, the Azure functions or, or indeed Azure itself. And, and yeah, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Amazing. Thank you, Stu, for, for that. Um, I'm just going to bring uh, Dinch and Angela back onto the stream uh, just quickly, just to say thank you to them as well. So hopefully they're ready to come back on. So um, really appreciate uh, the three of you joining us here today on New Breakpoint. Um, I know that you're all super busy uh, out there kicking wins and, and goals with our customers. So uh, a big thank you to the three, three of you. Um, and I think a, a really interesting end-to-end -end story that takes uh, you know, that kind of um, experience in an, a, a, a Jupyter notebook that a lot of data scientists would be used to working with, breaks it out into, into that sort of scale out uh, serverless capability inside of the Azure Functions, uses our uh, Azure Cognitive Services for what I like to call AI on an API uh, to really give you that capability without having to do that core training. Uh, and then operationalizing it. So that is a, an important aspect. Um, and we have some some really good stories to tell around that. So um, rather than get you all to, to, to hurrah, we'll, we'll wave wave goodbye to everybody. So if you want to give me a wave, say goodbye. Bye. OK, well, thanks a lot, everybody. So um, we'll speak to you again soon, no doubt. All right. So there we are. Um, today, it seems like the you're on mute gremlins gotten everybody. Um, so at least at least we're, we've made it this far and we've imparted some some useful developer insights uh, for you all. So let's just do a quick review on today's episode. Um, we had that quick overview at the start where everyone out there watching went, you're on mute, um, and I got that. Um, Angela, Dinch, and Stuart, as we just saw, joined us and ran through a really great end-to-end uh, -end scenario of uh, using Python uh, and Azure Functions uh, to build a, a realistic um, solution. Um, what I do have quickly is I'm just going to chuck a banner up here on the screen. So if you really want to go and have a look at the output uh, from the demo, uh, Dinch told me that um, everything finally woke up and did its thing. So if you go and have a look uh, at that uh, URL, that Twitter account, you should see the result of that, that run. Uh, depending on when you catch the show, it may not be available anymore. But right now, while we're live streaming, you should be able to go uh, and see that right now. OK, um, our next episode, that's next week uh, on Thursday. Uh, we have a community episode. We're going to be joined uh, by five members of our uh, community reporting crew. They're going to talk about uh, what the last year has meant uh, to communities around Australia. I think we can all, um, you know, uh, reflect on what the last year has meant for us personally, but what it was it like as a member of broader communities, and in some instances, community organisers and leaders as well. If you do want to catch up on uh, the outputs from today, um, the debug log at the bottom there will be updated uh, shortly after the show to contain uh, useful guidance and links uh, based on the talk from um, our three cloud solution architects from today. Uh, and then the final, uh, final piece um, is 
Microsoft Ignite, as I said at the top of the show, uh, we're doing a special show uh, in two weeks for Microsoft Ignite. So we've got um, a couple of folks joining us from our quantum team. So we have uh, Dr. Chris Grenade and Professor David Riley, uh, who will be joining to talk to us about uh, what quantum means for uh, us as developers, uh, how, how and what Microsoft is doing in the quantum space, both from a, a software design and a hardware design standpoint. And we're also joined uh, by two of our Australian MVPs, uh, Amy Holden and Lisa Crosby, who are going to be talking about how to next level your career um, by talking about what they've been doing to help next level their career. So that should be a great, great episode. If you do want to come along to that um, live, you do need to register for Ignite. Details are there on the screen uh, right now. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to make it along. There might be some surprises in terms of giveaways after the event as well. So make sure that you come along. All right. I want to say thanks a lot for joining us today. Um, it's been a, a great show. Um, I'm going to say goodbye for now. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all uh, next week on the show. Bye for now.